Since 1989, Medi-Cal, California's version of Medicaid, has had an asset limit of $2,000. And now, that is all about to change. Here to talk about those changes is our special guest, who specializes in protecting government benefits. Stay tuned, because you won't want to miss this episode of the Z-Settlement Channel. Welcome back to the Z-Settlement Channel. I'm your host, Chris Chan. Joining me today is Cameron Lindahl. He is the Vice President of Advancement of Secured Futures, who specializes in government benefits and asset preservation. Welcome to the show, Cameron. Thanks for having me here, Chris. Absolute pleasure. Uh, so just diving right in with a series of questions for our audience, what is considered an asset by Medi-Cal or Medicaid? Sure, so traditionally, assets are considered money in the bank, right? Sometimes this is in the form of stocks. Um, traditionally, that asset since 1989 has been $2,000. As of July 1st this year, that limit will be raised to $130,000 and will be completely eliminated by July 1st, 2024. That is just crazy to fathom that it would go from 2000 to unlimited at some point. Um, just your thoughts, what does that mean for people who are involved in settlements? Well, overall, it's a great thing for those living with impairments and disabilities. Um, but what it also means is that we no longer have to worry so much about state health insurance. Now we can focus more on income, and that's really the only thing we have to worry about, Chris. In the past, we would preserve these benefits by the use of um, uh, a vehicle of a, like a special needs trust, which you've helped me many times in cases. Um, can you tell our audience what a special needs trust is? Yeah, a special needs trust is the most common um, solution to preserve eligibility for government benefits, such as Medi-Cal or SSI. Um, and what's nice about it is it doesn't have any sort of asset limit, but it's not the only tool available. It depends on each case. Okay, and uh, you brought up SSI. Just curious for our audience, uh, these new changes, does it also go into effect for supplemental security income like SSI? It does not. So SSI is still something we need to worry about. And so you always want to ask their form of income or have them go to SSA.gov to acquire a benefits verification letter to confirm that that's not an issue. So in essence, there is still a place for a uh, special needs trust and within settlements. Yes, but it's um, not as common anymore, right? If somebody is not receiving SSI, they really don't need one unless there's a risk of misappropriation. Wow. Well, thank you so much for that knowledge and thanks for joining us, Cameron. Thanks for having me, Chris. Absolute pleasure. Well, thank you guys. We'll see you on the next episode. Hey there, we hope you enjoyed that video. Do us a favor though, hit that like button that looks like a thumbs up and also hit the subscribe button right below to make sure that you're informed about all of our latest videos. If you'd like, you can also click this video here to learn more about minors cases or click this video here to learn more about us. Ow, no, no, that's my eye. Click there, there or there, not here. Thank you.